So our lesson today, this lesson is about arguments. We're going to talk specifically about mathematical arguments and some of the vocabulary for making your argument true and trying to make sure that you always win your arguments because that's what we like to do. So we're going to be talking about um, inductive and deductive arguments. Also, um, some quick vocabulary. A premise is the statement that you start with and an argument is a bunch of premises reasoned together to form a conclusion. So you may have several different premises um, and you put them together in a certain order and that is your argument and it would lead towards the conclusion that you want or the end result that you want. Inductive and deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is when you use previously proven or accepted properties or laws to make a conclusion. So an example of that would be maybe a proof that you do in geometry when you have your proof set and each step uses a property or um, a law in mathematics that is true, okay, and those would prove the statement that you've made and they, that would be deductive arguments because each step is proven. Inductive arguments use reasoning based on patterns and past events or observations. An example of this would be um, if you see people walking out of a, um, a hotel, for example, and you see one person wearing a, a, like a white shirt and tie and a suit the next person's wearing a white shirt and tie, and the next person's wearing a white shirt and tie. And so you could make those some observations based on a pattern or event that perhaps there is some kind of meeting going on at this hotel, maybe in one of their meeting halls with a bunch of people who are dressed in suits, right? It may or may not be true. You could also say, um, well, the last three people who've walked out are wearing a white shirt and tie. I think the next person to come out is going to wear a white shirt and tie. That would be inductive reasoning. You're making a prediction based on patterns or events or observations, and it may or may not be true. If you use inductive reasoning and you follow the laws properly and the accepted proven properties, then it is absolutely true. Let's look at a couple of different laws um, that are helpful and useful for us in, in making proofs. First law is the law, uh, law of syllogism. Syllogism, syllogism, syllogism. It's one of those laws. <laughs> All right. This law is saying something like this. If A, then B. If B, then C. Therefore, A, then C. And I know that this is a math way of saying an argument, so let's go ahead and translate this into an English thing. If all fathers are men, if I am a father, therefore I am a man. There's the man right there. Okay? If all fathers are men, if I am a father, therefore I am a man. You see? So we prove our st first statement, fathers are men. If that's true, and I am a father and that's true, then therefore I must be a man. Okay, so again, we stated this, if A is true, if A then B, if B then C, therefore A then C. And so we kind of make a conclusion that jumps that gap of B, because B is the connection in between. All right, um, the law of detachment is a little bit more detached than that one. <laughs> All right, this one says, if A then B, and then you state A, therefore B is true. It's kind of a difficult one to... Let's go ahead and look at... If all books have paper, a math textbook is a book, therefore a math textbook has paper. All right, so if something is true, books have paper, then you say something like a math textbook is a book, therefore a math textbook has paper. So if books have paper, this is a book, therefore it has paper. Um, so it's a little bit different than, than what we had before, but you're basically saying if A then B, and then you state A again, therefore B. So if all books have paper, this is a book, therefore it has paper. Okay, so that's that's kind of the uh, 
the difference between those two laws. The next thing that we're going to talk just briefly about is valid arguments. Basically, um, arguments that are good, solid arguments. Not necessarily that they're right, but that the argument is good. And making sure that even conversely, you could have a true argument that's not valid, or you could have a, so in other words, a, um, a good argument that's not valid. It could be true, but it's a bad argument but we're going to try and make sure that we have good arguments. Not necessarily that they're always true, but we want to have good arguments. Let's look at um, an example here. A Maltese is a dog. My mom's pet is a dog, so my mom's pet's a Maltese. Now, this argument is not valid. Why is this not valid? It might not be valid, but it's true. My mom's dog really is a Maltese. Um, it's actually a Maltese mix, but um, it's Maltese. And so the argument is true. We're making a true statement here. My mom's pet really is a Maltese, but the argument is not sound, you see? Because it doesn't say that all dogs are Maltese, Maltese, Maltai, um, or Maltese pets, you know, Maltese dogs. It's just saying that a Maltese is a dog. My mom's pet is a dog. My mom's pet is a Maltese. It's, it's kind of a bad argument. But how could we make this a valid argument. What would we need to change? We just need to change the order of it, right? We could say a Maltese is a dog. My mom's pet is a Maltese. Therefore, my mom's pet is a dog, right? This would say actually it would be even better if it said all Maltese are dogs, right? But this is a much more valid argument. A Maltese, Maltese is a dog. My mom's pet's a Maltese. Therefore, my mom's pet is a dog. That makes a lot more sense, and the, the argument's a lot more valid, because all Maltese are dogs. But not every single dog is a Maltese. So in this previous one, my mom's pet is a dog. My mom, she could have a Great Dane, or like a Yorkshire Terrier, or a German Shepherd, or a Pit Bull. Who knows what she has? So we can't say that necessarily, just because we set up here that a Maltese is a dog, we can't, this argument wouldn't hold water, you see. So even though an argument may be true, it might not be a valid argument. So you need to pay attention to that um, as you go through with these. That You make sure to swap these, these statements, the premises of an argument, so that it is a valid argument the way it's set up. So I hope that you have a wonderful day. Try and avoid arguments. And if you can't avoid them, try and win arguments. And if you can't win them, lose them in a really nice way. All right, have a wonderful day.